Successful actor John Boyega has stepped down from being a global brand ambassador for the British cologne Jo Malone. So he made a short film which he conceptualized and directed and starred in, but in the Chinese leg of the global campaign, they actually replaced him with another actor and did not let him know. Of course, it's quite common for brands to do this when they're trying to feed to a local market. So do we think that these people were just doing their jobs? or do we think that John is correct in resigning? I think John is 100% correct in resigning. <laughs> 100%. Like, and I don't think that... I saw John Baker's tweet when he put it out that he was stepping down. He was also very aware. And he said, you know, I understand that sometimes they use different ambassadors in different regions. Mm -hmm. So he gets that. The point is, for me, this is intellectual property theft. This was his idea. This Listen, was his say that again. He, intellectual he, property. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's when intellectual property theft is when you steal people's ideas and things and then you try to pass it off as your own. Like, that's what happened. I digress. But in the social network, that's one of the things that they had to pay out for because they're like, it was somebody else's idea. And even though Mark Zuckerberg right. had the skills to make it happen, they're like, the point is, it was somebody else's idea and he had to pay out tens upon tens of millions to those people. It's intellectually, intellectual property theft. And that's what's going on with John Boyega. If this was his idea, mm. if he based it on his culture, his family was in it, he helped to direct it, you didn't compensate him. You didn't confirm with him. You didn't ask his permission. He had to find it on social media. I just have that's massive rough. respect for John Boyega for actually stepping yeah. down because he could have been upset about this in public but like, do you know what? I'm still going to collect a check. But he came out and was mm. just like, no, you don't do this to people. I'm not going to work with you. So massive respect. He made the right decision in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Sophie. I think he made, I, I think he made the right decision. I do understand it that you know sometimes people want to cater to that particular market so they'll use that particular yeah. person but the fact that they would reshoot his whole <laughs> his whole commercial his whole story and not have him in it it's just it's absolutely yeah. shocking and i think it speaks to this whole myth or lie that there is in hollywood or just in general like anytime you see media that um black people's stories aren't universal or we are not relatable when you see us on screen so therefore you need someone who's a bit more relatable and i just find that just crazy like i just find it shocking now <sighs> so the reason why i go <laughs> because i i <laughs> don't know if they did it on purpose I do think, I just think it was one of those things they may have done unconsciously. Like, okay, we're putting this ad in China, so maybe let's get someone who reflects more of that market. I don't think they were doing it to purposely hurt John, but I think that unconsciousness was still a way of them just, I think it was still of them neglecting black stories, but they were doing it unconsciously. I don't think it was like particularly targeted, like, okay, let's go away with John. I know that sounds crazy to say, but that's what I think. <laughs> Um, for this, for the, for the most part, I'm in the same boat as you guys because I definitely, you know, personally have a lot of respect for John Boyega as well, mm -hmm. um, as a person, but also for what he created. And we saw that mm -hmm. this did well. We saw, you know, it even won a, an award for best campaign at a fragrance award show. So this, yeah. Um, the short film that he has made has received its successes. And if it's globally successful, there's only one reason why you don't think he's going to be marketable. And that reason is very obvious. If we're going to explore the idea that people were doing it to um, appeal to the local market, please just let me know where in the remake we did that. Apart from just changing the people, <laughs> mm -hmm. where did that happen? Because in John's original short film, he merged his British culture with his Nigerian culture. Like it was really a beautiful piece that they created. In the second one, it was like scene for scene, the same thing minus John's yeah. culture, but there was no insertion <laughs> of a new culture. You just, you just changed the folks. We still saw horses and bicycles and a party, but that could have been anywhere in the world. And Anissa, I don't think it was that unconscious because I believe that if this was like Justin Bieber advertising for Joe Malone, they would see him as being 
being marketable in every corner of the world. So I yeah, think that I even agree. if you want to, you know, say to do the argument of we, we're trying to localize it for this particular market, then mm -hmm. if you're hiring this man because you value his creativity, then why was he not creatively involved in this remake? They could have came to a compromise. They could have came to some sort of compensation. Like Sophie said, they could have worked on this together, but you didn't tell him, you just replaced him and he saw it online and that is rough. It's tough, but you know the media's not an easy game. I <laughs> know that's one thing, but that's really, I'm not. I'm not like the media isn't famous for doing business well. Like they, let, they notoriously do people dirty, so I can't expect more of them. Of course, I think what they've done is crazy. I never say what they've done is great, but yeah. I'm never going to expect anything from them. I really am not. I just don't. I a heads up. You like, can't expect a heads up. You can't trust people's life, Luanda. You cannot. I. <laughs> that is not news. <laughs> <laughs> so you shouldn't expect for anyone to give you a heads up. You shouldn't. I pro honestly, you should not. <laughs> I think Joe Malone did a real disservice here because Joe Malone actually came out when all the Black Lives Matter thing was going on, and they said specifically they did are they? making a pledge to increase their black oh. talent in front of the camera no. and behind the camera. <laughs> True stories. Then when stuff started happening, and people were like, uh, "What's going on?" Like, actually, it's just going to be in the US and in regions where it's appropriate. <laughs> and that really annoyed me because what I was thinking was just like, what you mean is if black people aren't marketable, you're not going to use them. If an ethnic minority yeah. isn't yeah. marketable, because you're saying appropriate, I'm just like, that's a very large broad. brush that you're sweeping yeah. here. That's the word, that's a broad brush stroke there. So what does that actually mean? So I think Joe Malone, we're happy to take the credit and just think that we can transfer things over and no one's going to realize. But John realized and didn't John tell you this year he's not messing about with anyone doing foolishness? I can't wait to marry John. I'm glad they showed their ass this quickly because I've been waiting for these <laughs> fake and phone. No, I've been waiting for these fake and phony brands who, who sent out so much messages of support and they were going to do so much great things for black yeah. people. And we all knew it was fake and we were just waiting for their fake and phony ass to show themselves. And here we go. I'm glad it was quick yeah. this year for us to see. <laughs> I think what's upsetting as well is that if we, I think for a lot of people who don't live in like a culturally diverse environment, the way that you learn f from other cultures or the way that you learn of other cultures cultures is through the media so mm. when you actually have an opportunity to show if, if you're marketing to a country that you think is 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 not going to accept uh a, like a black man selling this product they're not going to buy it if a black man is selling it but you have an opportunity to show this film that was full of family and parties and mm. gatherings mm. and and love and things like that we have this opportunity to um open the perspective of the black community through this lens and you decide that the money is more important then like anisa said you are showing your ass a little bit because you you're saying that okay we can have it in the us and we can have it in the uk but if they're not going to buy it here we're not going to put it here but you can actually be part of, part of the solution by putting it there and changing perspectives because people might surprise you the thing is though Luanda, i would have been a hundred in fact i was a hundred percent in that camp um, until I read something in the Global Web Index and it was talking about marketing and it was saying the way to best market is to localize your advertising. So they're saying across the board, when people see that you've taken the step to kind of tap into the local culture, mm -hmm. it helps your brands to increase. So for example, Coca-Cola, I don't know if you remember when they sold those bottles with the names on them Yeah, and yes. they had like the names. Yeah. So they said what Coca-Cola did was they looked in the various areas where it was being advertised and they would make sure that names that were more popular in those countries or areas were put on bottles and they said that there was a sharing frenzy of the bottles also Nike when it was like was it proud to be a Londoner or I'm a Londoner they localized the advert and they said Nike's online searches went up 93 percent because wow. they they did it in Peckham and they were trying to show this is the real London yeah, and yeah. I, saw that, I was just like oh my exactly I was just like this represents me. I, was, I love gigs. Mm. <laughs> you need to behave yourself. <laughs> Localising isn't actually a problem. So when I read that in the article, I was just like, okay, I can understand for a Chinese audience, they're kind of like a Chinese person's going to fit better, even though there are some instances of racism in Chinese adverts. But 
It's the it's what they did. It's like you said, taking someone's personal story related to their culture and then trying to translate it by just putting someone of the similar race in it. That's where I have the issue. But when it comes to localizing, if they're gonna do an advert about the Caribbean, but they're just gonna put no. In fact, I've got a better example. Oh. When you travel to other countries, when I've gone to countries in Africa, when I've gone to the Caribbean, South America, you don't want to see posters of Justin Bieber. A lot of times you see people <laughs> of their local stars and their local mm -hmm. talent. You might not recognise who they yeah, are, yeah. but to the people there, they're like, I recognise that person. And them selling it is going to have a greater effect than mm. seeing John Boyega because this is somebody who we know who has lived in our culture. So it does work. It's just the way that Joe Malone went about it. I agree. And I think that's why in the beginning I said... Um, I can understand why they did it. And the only reason why I'm thinking yeah. like that is because I had to go and work in East Asia for a while, a couple of years ago. And I wasn't in China, but I was in Japan working. And guys, honestly, they had like a lot of the English stuff we had, they had just remade it and had their own characters and names and things like that. And it wasn't too offensive thing. It was just like, it was, it was just so it could appeal to their market. So I don't know if it was like the advertising team in London from Joe Malone, or if it was the advertising team central in China, because maybe it might be a cultural thing. And they were like, okay, well, this is the advert. Let's make it Chinese and let's do this. So that's why I think I'm not sure if it was on purpose because it depends on where the team was located for me. That was what, that's where my point was. So with, with localizing, I 100% understand that in terms of marketing because it is a smart marketing strategy and it does work. And I did read that with Joe Malone, they actually get most of their Chinese audiences through posts that they've made with Chinese actors, which is why they wanted to have a Chinese actor in the second version of the advertisement. Mm -hmm. My yeah. issue is you could have, you could have had the best of both worlds and mm -hmm. you could have merged. If Joe, if John Boyega is the global ambassador and you want a yeah. Chinese actor, you can genuinely have both. And I think you could have, aimed to not say reach a higher audience because I do yeah. believe that they probably wouldn't have responded to him as much as the the actor even when I looked at how they they made his face on the Star Wars poster literally smaller than the robots yeah. in China oh for Star Wars I they didn't see genuinely it. Yep. they made it smaller than the robot Anissa it was ridiculous so I think that if you want to be like Sophie said at the beginning they, they're talking about how they're going to be doing taking all these steps if you actually want to be part of the solution <laughs> you can be because how beautiful would it have been if you just had you know John on, and then a couple of, of famous actors like eating at the same table and interacting with each other and broadening people's perspectives on the black community like there there isn't anything that is more demonized than black men and black people so you had an opportunity there to try and reverse some of that psychology and you just chose the money instead yeah i think they, they definitely chose definitely chose the easy way out and it just really made me think as well about other instances where they just cut black people out of things like i don't know if you guys saw but there was an article in the guardian about a ugandan climate activist who was literally cut from a picture because and then when she when she said this is racism they were just like oh there was a building behind you that wasn't appealing so we cut the building <laughs> and you so i just <laughs> i just think what this kind of thing is I think with this Joe Malone thing, we are now seeing black people or ethnic minorities standing up and saying, this has been yeah. going on for a long time. John Baker isn't the first person to have his ideas stolen, Absolutely. but he's just like, this is not acceptable. And I hope we see more people willing to, st um, to stand up. But if they don't, they're affecting their own bag. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. John Baker has taken this step and it's affected him because that's money he's not getting. So... I understand both sides of it, but I hope we hopefully we are starting to see a shift of people saying, give me my receipts. If I gave you the idea, pay me for it. A hundred percent.